Philips Research Headquarters are located in Eindhoven at the High Tech Campus, where technology partners benefit from a spirit of open innovation that allows access to facilities, people and networks. As a further step in fostering open innovation, Philips has established My Plaza, a center for microelectronics and nanotechnology. At the core of the My Plaza facilities, a new state-of-the-art clean room is located. With its 2,650 square meters, the new My Plaza clean room ranks as one of the largest research clean rooms in the world. This clean room is a multi-purpose, multi-technology class 110,000 facility. It offers a broad range of process equipment capable of handling substrates of any shape in sizes up to 200 millimeters. The My Plaza clean room will be used by Philips for its internal strategic innovation programs, concentrating on topics such as materials and devices for molecular medicine, solid state lighting, system in package solutions for healthcare, lifestyle, and technology applications, sensors and actuators, and new types of displays. These will all benefit greatly from the broad range of materials, process technologies and the professional engineering crew. For making a micro or nanoscale device, the typical processing order is 1. Deposition 2. Lithography 3. Pattern transfer by etching and 4. Measuring and inspection Here, a batch of silicon wafers is loaded in a sputtering machine. In this case, a thin metal layer is deposited. For depositing a thin film coating, a range of technologies is available. A great variety of metals, alloys and inorganic components can be applied. We have over 150 materials in stock. Ion implantation can be done to modify the electrical properties of a material. High energetic ions are generated and accelerated towards the substrates. Like most of our machines, this implanter is able to handle standard sized silicon wafers as well as other substrate materials and sizes. Annealing of wafers is done in well controlled high temperature furnaces. Here a batch of wafers is carefully placed in a quartz loader. They are automatically loaded in the furnace tube, which in its interior can have temperatures as high as 1200 degrees. Photolithography is used for patterning the thin film into a microstructure. At first, a UV-sensitive photoresist is spun on the wafer, while rotating the wafer at very high speed. This process is followed by baking out the resist in one of the hot plate stations. Subsequently, the resist is locally exposed by UV light through the open areas in a mask. This exposure is done on a contact aligner or on a stepper. For making nano devices with details smaller than 100 nanometer, electron beam lithography is used. Here, the resist is not exposed by light, but by electrons. By using a spot size of 4 nanometer, very fine details can be fabricated. The wafer is loaded in a high-precision cassette. The wafer position is scanned followed by writing the pattern by the scanning electron beam. After lithography, the pattern must be transferred into the thin film by means of etching. 70 wet benches are available for wet chemical etching. Here, an automatic etch line is shown in which a batch of wafers is etched, rinsed and dried.
For resolving the finest details, anisotropic etching is needed. This is done by reactive ion etching, in which the removal of material is done in a vacuum system. Via a load lock, the wafer is transported into the reaction chamber, in which a combination of physical and chemical etching takes place. The reactor is equipped with an optical system to detect the end point of the etching process. The final product can be inspected through a microscope. However, in micro and nanotechnology, the high-resolution structures can only be imaged in a scanning electron microscope. Here, a sample with nanowires is observed. A finished wafer with the micro or nano devices can electrically be evaluated on a probe station. The wafer is scanned by a probe card with a parallel set of probe needles. In this way, vital information about the preceding processing can be obtained. This step is an important link between thin film processing and device performance. In order to stimulate open innovation, the clean room facilities of MyPlaza are also offered to third-party researchers and engineers active in the field of materials, devices and microsystems. These institutes and companies not only benefit from major cost savings that come from sharing facilities, but also from the stimulating cooperative atmosphere and know-how concentration at MyPlaza. Well, we created a very thin and flexible active matrix display. This display is very thin and very rugged. One product that you can think of is a display such as this. You can carry this around, roll it out, and roll it back in. So you have a large display when you need it, but you only have a small device that you can carry around with you when you don't need it. This will be very handy to use in conjunction, for instance, with your mobile phone, which can be much smaller then, but also in your car together with your GPS, or even in a warehouse where you can use it as a mobile map. Also, the display effect that we use is bi-stable, which makes it possible to remove all power once the image is written. And in a mobile environment, this ensures very low power consumption. Well, in order to be able to do this, we developed polymer electronics, and these polymer electronics enable us to process from fluid on a very thin substrate, very flexible. We combine the backplane with e-ink foil. This e-ink foil is flexible and uh, lightweight, has the bi-stability, which is good from a power consumption point of view. However, e-ink needs a switch for each pixel in the display. And the advantage of organic electronics is that we can make these switches on a very thin, very flexible foil, so the entire display remains flexible. At Polymer Vision, we have taken this process and brought it from a research phase into a development pre-production phase. And this has enabled us to now make batch production of these displays, making several displays a week. The quality of displays that we get has also enabled us to create not only displays, but to also integrate part of the driving electronics into the same process. Being able to also make part of the driving electronics in the same process as the display will enable us to combine the two and make displays with a smaller footprint, requiring less silicon, so making even smaller devices. Well, Philips sees this technology as a very important opportunity for the future. Therefore, this project has been placed inside the technology incubator as a venture. Inside this venture, we are looking for partners to help us industrialize the process and bring it from a developmental stage into mass production. So we've achieved the world record in DVD writing. So we were the first to write a DVD with 16x speed. That means a full disc can be written in six minutes. What we call the speed race is about increasing the recording speed on optical storage products like CD. There was a speed race starting from 2x to 4x and going up to the ultimate speed of 48x. And the same we see happening in the DVD recording products. They started off with 1x and then 4x and the ultimate speed which can be achieved is 16x and that's what we have achieved. To get this result, we've done essentially three things. We have 
uh, built a dedicated setup. We have uh, used a special way to write the data on the disk, and the disk itself had to be improved. So you have to imagine the disk rotates at 200 kilometers an hour underneath the objective lens. And at these very high speeds, you need to focus the laser and keep it on track. So we have had to improve the electronics and also the mechanics to, to keep the system stable. And then furthermore, we had to imp increase the laser output power. So the disk we improved in cooperation with the media companies, and in this case with Rico company. And so what we've done, we've done many testing of disks and have advised those companies to improve the right characteristics of the disks. The, the, the challenge of 16x recording is the, uh, in effect, we call pitch shrinkage. And this is the written data changing its shape when you write the next data point. And to uh, remove this effect, we have uh, applied a special write surgery to the laser pulses which doesn't uh, result in pitch shrinkage. The next step, the DVD plus RW alliance will define the standard based on this technology. And after that, you can expect products on the market. Uh, with double layer uh, DVD plus R, we have integrated in a optical disc, a DVD recordable disc, an extra layer. So this will then enable the user of such a disc to record instead of 4.7 gigabytes, eight and a half gigabytes on the disk, so almost a double, a double storage capacity. And for video applications, it means now you can record on a uh, single layer uh, disk about two hours of vid high video quality uh, video. And now the consumer can uh, almost do double the amount of uh, recording time, so it's almost four hours. People started uh, shortly after the introduction of a single layer version of uh, DVD plus R, talk about the dual layer version. But many people, many companies, many people from universities have done experiments on such a system. And they said, we can never make a compatible system. So first of all, we did extensive calculations on this system. If, if it would be possible to make a system that's compliant to the uh, dual layer ROM standards. And in our back of the envelope calculations, it, uh, it turned out that it could be done in principle. So then we started by, we have got two layers in double layer, by optimizing both layers. So for the upper layer, we know that we have to have 80% of reflection and 50% of transmission. And for the lower layer, you have to have 60% of reflection. And also the sensitivity has to be uh, high because this layer is shielded by another layer. So first we started optimizing both layers. So that is materials, like the dye material, and also uh, the silver cooling layers. For example, in the upper layer, you, you, you use a very thin layer, about 10 nanometers thick. It has to be stable over time, and also it has to cool. And also, if you have such a disk, we did, we did in the specifications, reflection, transmission, both layers. It also, also, you have to do recording on this disk. So you have to write data with, an op with, an, with a drive in the right way, so that it is good data. And that's, that, that's difficult. You can, you can get easily 18% or 50% transmission. But then also to have good uh, re recorded data on this disk, that's, that's the hard thing. And in the end, we succeeded in this. We have made such a disk together with uh, a media company, MKM. We have been able to write on our experimental uh, setup, uh, make a new uh, disk, a double layer disk. It will require uh, new recording uh, equipment. But as soon as you have recorded it, you can give it to any of your friends, your grandma, your mother, and she, he can play this disc in equipment that's already in the house. In Philips, we're working on the next generation of uh, TV, uh, which includes depth information, which will be a 3D TV, uh, because we want to provide the most natural uh, looking image. We have developed a unique concept that uh, allows you to watch 3D from different angles. It consists of an optical component that you put in front of a uh, flat display and that directs the light from the display into the viewer's eyes. And if you have different viewing angles available, uh, you can direct different viewers into the two eyes, giving you a sensation of depth. I think on the long term, we believe that the broadcast world will make the switch towards 3D, just like they made the switch from black and white to color.
But in the meantime, we already want to provide uh, 3D already in your home, and that's why we're working on real-time uh, processing algorithms that can convert existing two-dimensional video into 3D. Now, the source can be of any kind. It can be from a camcorder, just uh, a home movie, or content from the internet, or from a DVD, or just your regular uh, broadcast TV channel. We have designed a very flexible uh, system, uh, combining our unique 3D display and processing. Now, we have applications in the professional domain, like in medical, uh, but also uh, for mobile and for PCs, where we are explicitly looking at gaming. Silicon on Anything is a new technology that brings button-sized communicators close to becoming a reality. With this new bipolar IC technology, high-frequency, low-power ICs containing integrated inductors can be made. The basic step that we discovered or that we developed was this transfer of circuits from a silicon substrate to a glass substrate. And that was such a beautiful new step once we saw that. And I remember that in that time I felt like a child who for the first time got a new gearbox for their Lego toys. Mm -hmm. And I realized, okay, now when, since I have these new gears or these new pieces for my Lego, I can build this and I can build that. Or you can even use a flexible material like epoxy here, so that you can make really flexible circuits. And that's the reason why we call this technique silicon on anything. Is it? It's actually an IC completely on glass, and uh, what it does, it receives the GPS signal, so you connect an antenna to it, and out comes the low frequency signal. And this is really one of the well, best in class products where you have uh, lowest power consumption combined with a very high integration level of uh, RF components. And so this is one of the first products, you might say, in this, uh, in this process. And one of the nice things has been, to, over these years, to step one by one realize these uh, initial... In the Philips Paintball LCD process, displays are fabricated by simple coating techniques. First, a liquid is dispensed on the edge of the substrate. This liquid contains all the necessary ingredients to make a liquid crystal switch. The so-called doctor blade is used to coat the substrate with a thin wet film. Then the film is exposed to ultraviolet light. Prior to the ultraviolet exposure step, a pattern of adhesion promoter is printed on the substrate. During the exposure, the film separates in a pure liquid crystal layer covered with a hard plastic top layer. The top layer is locally connected to the substrate at places where the adhesion promoter was printed. This improves the mechanical stability of the display. The plastic cover can be coated with additional functional layers. The resulting liquid crystal switch resembles an array of tiny plastic boxes that are filled with the liquid. These boxes can be seen through a microscope. Finally, the liquid crystal switch has been provided with two polarizers. Moving images can be displayed by applying an appropriate voltage to the electrode structure. Electrowetting is a, is a technology with which we can uh, manipulate fluids, basically. So we can manipulate uh, and place fluids wherever we like. What we have is we have a stack of uh, water, oil and a hydrophobic insulator. Underneath there is uh, an electrode. And in the normal state, when no voltage is applied, then uh, the oil, which is colored, actually forms a nice layer. So if you look at it from the top, then you see a colored pixel. And if you then apply a voltage, the oil actually contracts into one of the corners of the pixels. The pixel becomes transparent, and since we have a white backplane, the pixel becomes white, so you have a switch between white and color. I think there's, there's two things which are really special about it. First of all, it uh, is a very high brightness uh, reflective display and that, uh, that really is very essential for a reflective display because these make use of ambient lighting and uh, so you have to make very efficient uh, recycling of this, uh, of this light. And the second, uh, I think, very nice feature about this uh, display is that you can actually switch pixels with a video speed response, so uh, that allows us to show video speed on an electronic paper-like uh, uh, display. Yeah, I think there's, there's say, two features with which people really like about 
piece of paper. I think there's the optical properties, so it's very high brightness, very nice colors. That's one thing, plus the very broad viewing angle also. Uh, I think with electrowetting display we can we can get the same kind of uh, high brightness, high viewing angle uh, optical appearance. In our case, I think you have to think about you know mobile phones, PDAs, uh, maybe even laptops that you uh, you want to use outside, because your normal laptop doesn't work very well in uh, in, in high brightness conditions. A laptop with an electrowetting display would work very well actually in high brightness conditions. So what we typically now make is, is, is things like this. So uh, say a few millimeters in size uh, test cells with uh, the different colors also. Um, what we're planning to do is actually scale up to one inch by the end of this year and then uh, continue till uh, you have six inch displays uh, say uh, in, a, in a year or so for now. Uh, yeah, it's generally very difficult uh, to really develop and, and, and put a new completely novel display principle into the market by your own. Uh, so we're certainly welcoming uh, other companies, other display manufacturers also to, uh, to say, join us in, uh, in developing this, uh, you know, very nice and attractive uh, electrowetting display. To convert the image of an LCD display into a large area picture, you need an optical projection system and a high intensity point light source. The UHP lamp of Philips has an extreme high luminance, higher than the sun, and is by now used in most video projectors of all major brands. New developments make this lamp suitable for many more applications, from projection television to electronic cinema. This projection lamp market is a very attractively, fastly growing market, and Philips is a clear market leader where we are the innovators and we still innovate year after year new lamps. We started with a 100 watt lamp of this size and now we operate at more than 200 watt in that size. So miniaturization is one research issue aiming at portable projectors. Another thing is that we extend the lifetime up to 20,000 hours making consumer products realistic. And the third thing is that we are pushing the limits of high power lamps bringing electronic cinema into reality. In this lab we can build these lamps from scratch on, let's say like that, and we can all do all the diagnostics and all the experiments on the lamp. You can do really high level research work here, like as at the university, but at the same time you get uh, your ideas realized and you can see that you can yeah, change the world a little bit.